Business and living are all about relationship. So I would ask you to speak to us about what you've learned about relationship. Okay. Well, for me, um, the joy and the happiness in business, I realized, is in the relationships I, I, I had uh, during the 40 years, really, I was an entrepreneur. Um, my relationships with the people that I bought, bought from, my suppliers, my farmers, uh, the relationships with the people I sold to, my customers, the relationships with the people I worked with, uh, my employees, and my relationship uh, with Earth itself. So I actually developed a, a mission statement based on that, that our, our mission is to serve uh, fully, to be fully of service in four different areas, serving our customers, our community, our employees, and uh, serving nature. So let's expand a little bit on the saving nature, because we tend to forget, and this is future primitive, and that's what we're concerned with mostly. Mm -hmm. So we tend to forget that we are nature. That's right, yes. And so I'd like to hear about, through food, how you have developed that in a deep way. Yes. Well, um, in many ways, really. Um, and, I, and I feel like our getting out into nature, uh, being in nature, is just so important. Um, because uh, for me, um, I, I'm, that's where I'm most inspired. That's, uh, being in nature is where I really feel connected uh, to the world and have a sense of belonging. Um, um, sometimes when I've been away from the woods for a long time, when I get back to the woods, I just feel like I'm falling into the arms of Mother Nature. You know, I just uh, feel like coming home. Um, and I've tried as a business person to be aware of the effect on nature um, that my decisions have. Um, and that's why I developed a, a mission statement that includes uh, serving nature. So when I'm, I have an um, opportunity, I often use the example, the opportunity to buy renewable energy, for instance, it costs more money. Um, so if my mission was to maximize profits, then I wouldn't be able to justify buying renewable energy uh, because it would make my costs go up. Um, and but because my mission is to serve nature, I jumped at the opportunity to buy renewable energy because it was a way of serving nature uh, by doing so, and it was also a way of serving my community because I was not relying on on, uh, on burning fossil fuels or nuclear energy that was a threat to my community. Uh, so so having a a mission that, um, based on serving nature and community and so on, helps me make the right uh, business decisions. And that's also true uh, in terms of buying food, um, buying organic food, uh, which doesn't use pesticides and, and fossil fuel-based uh, fertilizers that actually destroy the topsoil, um, and also buying free-range uh, pastured animal products where the animals, pigs, cows, chickens, whatever, are out on pasture. And so um, manure, um, it, which is a problem in the industrial system of raising animals in concentrated animal feeding operations called CAFOs. Manure is a problem because it's so concentrated that it pollutes the environment where um, when you buy pastured animals, you're supporting a system where the animals and the manure actually is a benefit to the topsoil because it's spread out over um, many, many, many acres and actually helps um, uh, provide more nutrition to the, to the soil. Um, so there, there's many things like that. I think that food is really um, an, an important part of our economy uh, because I th we buy more than uh, more food than anything else because uh, we eat three three times a day and snack and whatnot. So our economic uh, dollar spent um, on food um, affects uh, many things, including the environment. So it's I feel like it's one of the most important things to do, whether you're in, in, in business buying food or an in individual person, to really think before you buy uh, food and what is the effect of the type of food that you're buying you know, on the natural environment. So let me ask you on a personal level. Speak to people about not making money the bottom line and the most important profit, the most important thing. 
in business and what would you say to motivate people uh, not to live from that perspective in their business? Right. Well, I feel that um, when, you, when your mission is not based uh, just on the single bottom line of profit, but on the uh, triple bottom line of uh, people and planet as well as profit, sometimes it's called the three Ps, uh, when you have that as a mission, uh, where you think about the effect of your business decisions on people, uh, planet, or the environment, as well as profit, that in the long run, you actually make more profit. Because oftentimes, uh, when people base their decision making on short term profit, which often goes against uh, people, against uh, the environment, uh, they think they're maximizing their profits. But on the long term, um, if you don't support people and planet, you're not going to make a, a profit either. So if you, if you believe in long term profitability, uh, then you realize that your natural capital on your social capital of people and nature uh, needs to be kept prosperous as well. Um, so you really can't have economic prosperity without social and environmental prosperity. The three are, are linked. Um, so you know, long-term thinking people realize that and they base business decisions on the triple bottom line rather than the single bottom line of profit. Well, you were probably brainwashed like anybody else who grew up in the 50s, 60s, etc. How did you, Judy Wicks, come to profoundly understand that and be able to pass it on? Well, you know, it, uh, it's an interesting question because you're right. Uh, uh, like, like others, I, I grew up in a society where materialism um, and growth of materialism is the measure of our success. Uh, and I, uh, what I feel um, is that um, I came in touch um, about what I really cared about. And I, I think that's, uh, that's the problem that we have in our society. I feel like our consumer society uh, has de desensitized us um, to the cruelty that underlies our economy. So we don't think um, about... Um, the animals or nature or workers, you know, when we buy something. Uh, and if we allow ourselves to feel, if we allow ourselves to hear the cry of the pigs in the crates or hear the cry of a calf or its mother when it's taken away in the dairy business, um, if we hear the cry of the slaves used in chocolate production, um, if we hear the cry of indigenous people where oil companies are trying to drill their wells, then that will affect our decisions. I, I feel as though we don't hear uh, because we, our hearts are closed, and so are our ears and our eyes. Um, and if, if we allow ourselves to, to feel, um, then we'll protect what we care about. Um, and I think that's what happened to me. And it, a lot of it, I feel, is, is about uh, getting in touch with femin our feminine side. Um, and this is true for men as well. I'm not talking about male and female, but rather about the feminine and masculine qualities that men and women both have uh, and how it's gotten out of balance um, in our economy and in our society, that there's too much uh, male energy and not enough feminine energy. Um, and um, I include myself in that. You know, when, when, uh, you know, when I was growing up, and decided to have a career in business, it's, it's about keeping the stiff upper lip, you know, not, not making decisions like a big sissy from the heart, you know, not being sentimental about things. You gotta make strong business decisions and you can't, you know, worry about feelings, all this kind of stuff. And, you know, um, that, that's how most of the business world works. And it's very based on the, the, the masculine, you know, quality of efficiency um, as opposed to the more feminine quality of nurturing. And it's this, in my, one of my farmers actually used this comparison. He said that to be a good farmer, you have to have a balance of feminine and masculine energy, of efficiency and nurturing. That if you have um, too much efficiency, um, you won't have uh, very good vegetables. But if you have too much nurturing of your vegetables, you just love those tomatoes so much, <laughs> and not enough efficiency, uh, you'll go bankrupt. And you won't be a farmer anymore. So we need masculine energy. We need the efficiency, the structure, 
Um, but we also need the feminine, the nurturing, you know, um, the loving, the care, and the compassion. Uh, and it's got it out of whack. Um, and like I say, it's not about being a, a woman or a man. If you ask my partner, he'll tell you that I have more efficiency energy than I do nurturing energy. <laughs> I like to create structures and um, run an efficient uh, business that makes a profit. Um, but it has to be at the balance, and that's the problem. So I feel like that my journey, uh, my journey towards uh, finding that balance uh, was really about uh, discovering my, my feminine side that I had repressed. Uh, back, uh, growing up back in the 50s, um, I loved to play baseball. And I was a good baseball player because I was the oldest child. And my father loved baseball, so he taught me how to play. So when I was 10 uh, in gym class, I just couldn't wait for softball practice. And when the gym teacher said, OK, it's a great spring day out there. We're going to play softball today. I'm like leaping on my chair, ready to go. And then he said, all the guys, all the boys down there to the field, girls, you go over there and practice cheerleading somewhere. So I was just so chest falling. Of course, nowadays he'd be sued, but back then that's the way it was. So I bought into the idea that girls were second-class citizens, you know, and this made me have contempt for uh, for girls and self-contempt. Uh, I I felt the destructive nature of discrimination uh, and how it makes you have contempt, you know, for yourself for being a girl. Um, and this is true with you know. Uh, gender discrimination, racial discrimination, cultural discrimination, or whatever, it, it's very destructive. Um, but I bought into that, and so I wanted to make it in a man's world. I wanted to be like a guy. I wouldn't play with dolls. You know, back in the 50s, women were raised to be caregivers, to have a life of service. And so we were taught to cook and sew and take care of babies. And I thought, I'm not going to have a life of service. Service, that's, that's no good. I want to be cool like the boys. Right. But then ironically, I ended up having uh, starting a business, and when I really thought about it, what do I want my mission to be is about service. <laughs> so I came full circle. I came back to uh, those values that I had repressed uh, and said no to and realized that that's actually what I wanted. So I, I think it was really, uh, you know, coming, um, uh, uh, my feminine values kind of emerging from being repressed as a child that made me a different kind of business person. This is beautiful. <laughs> I. Uh, I have one more question. When you said I grew the Mad Dog Cafe to be a $5 million a year business, there's a lot of young people in the audience and they began to clap. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, oh, is that the most important value? And so in the rest of your speech, you probably got across to people that it's the three Ps and not. Right, exactly. Yeah, it, it has to be uh, both. I, I, I put it in that figure because a lot of people think, because it's called cafe, white dog cafe, that's just a real small cafe. Um, and I wanted to show that I was financially successful um, in having this philosophy of service. That it's not a sacrifice. Yes. You don't have to be a martyr. That you can, ha you can have it all um, if you are willing to share um, and to serve. Um, that you can be financially successful and also serve people and serve nature. Um, and, but it's about knowing how much is enough, not taking more than your share. That's the key, I think, to this. Um, and I, I, I was very influenced by that in living with indigenous people, you know, um, who knew how much enough was um, and realized that their survival depended on sharing and, and cooperation. Um, but our, again, our, because our society measures success by how much we have, people have more and more and more. Um, you know, grossing $5 million didn't mean that I made the $5 million. <laughs> the $5 million went to pay for organic farmers and renewable energy and living wage jobs for my staff and so on. So um, the success, the financial success that we had uh, made our whole community more, more rich, more successful because we spent that money um, on local farmers, on local suppliers, on our staff, and so on. On each other. On each other, yeah. right, right. Yeah. And investing my, my, uh, my, my profits locally as well, um, so that that money was used to build the wood turbines and so on. So um, money's not evil. You know, money, money is a tool. And that's the other thing, that sometimes, you know, when I'm speaking to a crowd that's uh, a non-business crowd, um, they see all business as evil. Uh, that business is the root of all evil, business is the problem, money is evil, um, and that's not, that's not the solution. 
you know, so uh, it's not, um, in some ways I found myself kind of in the middle between the nonprofit world and the for-profit world um, because it, it's upsetting to me and I think self-destructive when the nonprofit world uh, gets very self-righteous, you know, about business and money. Um, and they think it's, you know, um, they may work in McDonald's and have disdain for me because I have high prices on my menu. When, what, what kind of system are they supporting, you know, by working at McDonald's um, and being self-righteous because they aren't a business owner, but they have to work somewhere, <laughs> or they might go to McDonald's to buy food. Uh, so it's, um, you know, there, there's, um, there's a lack of awareness. It's just not the business community um, that needs to change their perspective. It's also the non-business community that needs to change their perspective that, to realize that we need business. The, the, the idea is to have beautiful businesses, you know, that really serve the community, but not to be against business. Beautiful businesses. <laughs> Thank you very much, Julie Weeks. <laughs> You're welcome. Appreciate your words. Thank you.